Hey guys, I'm Adam Young from Sentinel 3D Scanning, and in this video we're going to be discussing what equipment you should put in your metrology lab. A couple months ago I discussed what you should consider when preparing your metrology lab space, and now we're going to talk about what you should put in it. So if you haven't seen the first video, make sure to watch it as well, maybe even before watching this one. And before getting started, just a quick disclaimer, the recommendations I make in this video are high level in nature because I don't know what parts you're inspecting exactly, it would be foolish for me to tell you exactly what equipment you need to put in your metrology lab. So just remember to take what I say with a grain of salt. At the end of the day, you will need to consider what your needs are and you will need to decide what works best for your lab. The first thing I would consider when deciding what to put in a lab space is large equipment. Things like coordinate measuring machines, optical measuring machines, optical comparators, 3D scanners, CT scanners, and profilometers. Basically anything that is expensive and takes up a lot of space. These pieces of equipment will likely be the focal points of your lab and will get used the most, which is why I think it makes a lot of sense to choose these items first and then fill your lab out around them. When choosing these tools, you need to make absolutely sure that the tool will add value to your lab by being able to inspect the parts you're measuring. I can't stress this enough. I've seen too many instances where a manager that has never had to inspect parts for a living has purchased a piece of equipment for a lab only to have it collect dust because it was ill-equipped to measure a specific type or size of part. One example I've personally seen is putting a portable measuring arm in a lab space inspecting consumer electronics. A tool like that makes a lot of sense for a lot of labs, but not so much in that lab. Just to drive this point home further, if you are a manager watching this video, I would encourage you to talk with your inspectors before making any purchases. I would also recommend taking sample parts to the equipment manufacturer and spending a couple of days on the machine yourself and with your inspectors. Pay for airfare, hotels, and maybe even training if you have to. It could save you hundreds of thousands of dollars and years of frustration in the end. Another important designation I would make is whether you are inspecting parts for production or for research and development. Production inspection will require higher throughput, so make sure to choose inspection tools that can get the job done fast once the inspection procedure is established. Equipment for R&D will instead require versatile equipment that can handle anything you throw at it. Speed isn't a high priority here. To illustrate this point, if you're purchasing a CMM and a lab is inspecting for production, they would probably get something like a high-speed Revo probe head for their CMM while a lab inspecting for R&D may instead purchase a CMM that can have a bunch of sensors on that CMM, like laser scanners and roughness sensors. The next category I would consider is acquisition and analysis software. In fact, in some instances, I may even prioritize this more highly than large equipment because the software you plan to use may help make the large equipment decision for you. And I specifically say acquisition and analysis software here because we're going to discuss another type of software in the next video, so stay tuned. And just as a quick explanation, when I say acquisition software, I'm talking about the software that is used to collect 3D points in space. And when I say analysis software, I'm talking about the software that can then analyze those points and produce measured results. Sometimes labs use a single application to accomplish both of these goals, and sometimes they use two different applications to accomplish each goal. The reason acquisition and analysis software is so important is because it is what your programmers and your operators are going to be staring at day in and day out. It will be their primary interface to the equipment. So for the mental well-being of everyone in the lab, please don't take this decision lightly. If the software is buggy, you're going to spend a lot of time troubleshooting, finding workarounds, and speaking with application engineers. If your software doesn't have a function you need, like perhaps a geometric tolerance modifier, you may have to purchase a separate application just to analyze that one tolerance. So make sure your software does everything you need it to while also still maintaining an acceptable level of reliability and usability. All software is not created equal. As far as acquisition software goes, you may have some options, especially when it comes to CMMs. You could use the software that comes with the equipment like Calypso, PC Demis, or MCosmos, or you could go with a third-party application sold by another vendor. 
like Polyworks, Metrolog, Verisurf, or CMA Manager. Here are some pros for using the acquisition software that comes with the machine. One, better support from the equipment manufacturer. The manufacturer may lay blame on your third-party software provider when you experience a problem. Two, better support for machine-specific sensors and functions. If your machine has a camera or a roughness sensor on it, the third-party software may not play well with it. And three, fewer companies to deal with, but only if you also use the acquisition software for analysis as well. Here are some pros for using third-party acquisition software. One, freedom to purchase many machine brands. You can purchase machines from several CMM manufacturers. And two, only one software to learn. As far as analysis software goes, a similar decision must be made. Is the analysis and reporting functionality in the equipment manufacturer's software good enough? Or should another application like Polyworks, Metrolog, or Smart Profile be used for analysis? Here are some benefits to using a different application for analysis. One, better GDNT support. Third-party apps in general tend to keep up with GDNT a bit better than first-party apps. Two, better reporting. Third-party apps seem to focus more on creating fancy, modern-looking color plots than first-party apps do. Again, this is just a generalization. To summarize, you have three options. One, equipment manufacturer software only. Two, third-party software only. And three, equipment manufacturer acquisition software plus third-party analysis software. Now that we have our large equipment selected, we can start to build out our metrology lab around it. For each piece of large equipment, I would recommend three pieces of furniture, if you will. One, a stand for benchtop equipment. If the equipment is a benchtop system, it will need some sort of stand. I would recommend using a stand that is separated from anything else to avoid vibrations. Two, a desk for the PC. I would recommend a sit-stand desk to prevent operator fatigue. And three, a workbench with storage underneath and a large work area. This will be used to store all of the accessories that come with the machine and also a good place to stage parts prior to inspection. It will also be a good place to store our next topic, which is fixturing. When it comes to fixturing, there are two categories I'd like to discuss. The first is custom fixturing. These types of fixtures are designed and made specific to each design, and are sometimes even called out on the parts drawing. Since this type of fixturing will be specific to the parts you're inspecting, I won't say much more about it in this video. The second type of fixturing I'd like to talk more about is universal fixturing. Universal fixturing isn't specific to any one type of part and is essentially the Lego bricks of metrology labs. The basic idea is that you start with a plate with a bunch of tapped holes in it, and then you use a variety of universal pieces to build a fixture up that will work for the part being inspected. The fixture plate with tapped holes should be considered first. I would recommend ordering the fixture plate through the company that sold you the machine to ensure the plate can be clamped onto the machine using the pre-existing hole pattern. Universal fixturing companies will sometimes have machine-specific hole patterns on hand, but not always. Before ordering the plate, make sure to choose the thread size that you want to go with. Choose a thread size that matches the size of parts that you plan to inspect. Tiny parts will require something small, like M4 threads, while larger parts will require something large, like M8. Or maybe you just want to use the same thread size throughout the entire lab. If that's the case, maybe just pick one size and stick to that. After your plates are selected, choose a kit to go with. I would recommend going with one kit for each machine. That way you aren't wandering all over the lab and stealing fixturing from other kits. It may be tempting to cheap out and get a minimal kit to get started, but you will quickly learn that you will need more pieces. One additional point I should make is that some fixturing companies sell fixture building software. This is useful if you are using CMMs and OMMs that have collision avoidance features built in that automatically generate collision free paths for your program. Importing a CAD model of your part with it already assembled to a fixture will make your life much easier 
when using these types of programming applications. Unfortunately, that's all I have time for in this video, but there will be a part two in which I cover even more things that you should put in your metrology lab. But before signing off, I'd like to ask you what you think. If you were setting up a new lab, what would you put in it? And of course, it wouldn't be a video without me putting in a shameless plug for my business. So if you or anyone you know is in need of 3D scanning services, either for inspection or reverse engineering applications, make sure to check out my business at sentinel3dscanning.com.